So France saunter into the quarterfinals of the World Cup with an absolute demolition job on the Italians who were their own worst enemies from pretty much the opening kickoff. I'm going to get into that in the video and also talk about this World Cup as a whole. What are we learning about how good the best teams in the world are and everyone else and the gap in between them? Drop a comment down below. Let me know what you made of the game, what you make of this French team as they head into the quarterfinals as well. They were very, very, very good tonight. Also, like the video, subscribe to the channel as well. Let's get into it. So France 60, Italy 7, the final scoreline, and it was as one-sided as that. I'm going to get onto the Italians, I'm going to speak about the French, but I wanted to open up this video with just contemplating something really. I suppose when I was watching the game here tonight in Lyon, I was looking at it and I was thinking about some of the scorelines we've had over the course of this World Cup. And I just wondered, will this be the World Cup? And in particular, do you think this will be the round of fixtures, which just displays the disparity between the very best teams in the world and everyone else, essentially, as I mentioned in the intro, because I think we've seen it probably on a number of occasions throughout this World Cup. There have been some exceptions. If you look at what Fiji have done in Pool C, some of the other teams in terms of Portugal and Uruguay have got, had good performances as well. But I think at the end of this pool stage, I will do a video because I need to look into it a little bit more. But I'm pretty sure in terms of the amount of sides that have been held scoreless, the lack of games that, or, or the amount of games that have been decided by a score or less, all that sort of thing is incredibly high at this World Cup. And I just wonder whether actually what we're seeing is that these very best sides in the world are streaks ahead of everyone else. We'll see what happens tomorrow night between Ireland and Scotland. That will be another interesting indication of that because Scotland, you feel, are right there underneath those top four teams. So the kind of gap there might go some way in answering the question, but I was pondering that as I was watching the game tonight. What it also displayed tonight is how accurate you have to be against the very best sides. I started making a note of Italian mistakes because it was throughout the game, but some massive ones early on as well. And in fact, if I pick out two, off the opening kickoff, Italy received the ball. They got it in their 22. They went one phase more into the midfield of that 22. They thought about going back to the short side. They put it in the pocket and that kick landed 15 metres in from the touchline, completely unopposed. It set up the French in the Italians' half and France scored probably about a minute later after they'd gone through the phases. And then we also saw a similar thing towards the end of the half, around the 35-minute mark. Garbisi had a penalty which he put dead. From the ensuing scrum, France won a penalty. They kicked into Italian territory and ended up scoring a try. And it was those kind of basic errors from Italy which allowed France into the game and France are such a good side they have so many weapons that they will capitalize on those opportunities if you give it to them so the best teams in the world if you give them opportunities they will take them you have to be more accurate than Italy were tonight and as I say it was from the opening kickoff and those early scores I think after what was it we were 10 nil after six minutes and I wrote down in my notes game over and it was from that point because it was just Italy couldn't catch the ball, their kicking was poor. I made down in my notes here again, the first meaningful, really good, positive impact Italy had on the game was after 25 minutes when they made that line break through the midfield, they got into the French 22 and then they ended up knocking it on about five metres from the try line. But that was the first thing that I can remember, which was the Italians really having a positive impact on the game. Now, of course, a lot of that is to do with what the French do, in particular taking the opportunities that they are given. But I think from an Italian perspective, if we want to throw in the game against the All Blacks as well, this has been a pretty disappointing World Cup for them. And look, I know they were always going to be underdogs. Clearly what we saw today, they were never truly going to trouble the French. But when you look at those basic sort of things, what do Italy want to do at the start of the game? They know they're receiving the ball. So what is the exit strategy? To get it so wrong right at the start, completely put themselves on the back foot before they've even had an opportunity to get into the game was pretty disappointing. I would imagine the Italians themselves would have been quite irritated with that as well. And then you look at it in the start of the second half, they took their captain off early. You just felt like the, their heads were down and they knew that they weren't getting back into it. I also want you actually to mention the Italian no try in the first half because that I thought was an interesting bit of officiating. The French crowd were up in arms as you would be as a home support but I just don't really feel like that should be being given. It looked pretty borderline and I didn't know if the early contact was here and then it rode up a little bit. 
it's a front row forward who's coming down low into it. They're not coming upright. I mean, what more is he able to do? So that was something that I suppose this game here, it didn't really matter. Italy got resoundly beaten. They were never going to, even at that stage in the game, get back into it. But if that happens next week in one of those quarterfinals, on the really tough side of the draw or in any of the quarterfinals for that matter, that again is, I think, where I know that the game of rugby and world rugby want to stamp it out and change behaviour but I'm just not sure what more in terms of behaviour the Italian player could have done in that situation but let's get on to France I've spoken enough <coughs> excuse me about Italy so far they are such a good side and I think this is a really good example of it today even though Italy are not the best side and not the best opponents that they'll come up against when France get opportunities, they're kind of like what we've seen from New Zealand. It's like what we've seen from the Springboks and from Ireland as well. When you give them opportunities, if you give them opportunities, they have the firepower and the capability to, to take them. And also just being here in terms of the occasion and being in France at a home World Cup with probably the best French team we've seen for a long, long time. A French side who have the best opportunity to win a World Cup in a long, long time. It was awesome just to be here. The expectation... And the feeling around the stadium was, was palpable, really. And great to be here for that. But similarly to what I said last night after the All Blacks game, how much can we learn from it? And it, this isn't a criticism of France or New Zealand. They've gone out and absolutely pumped two teams. They've been brilliant in attack. They've been ruthless. They've cut their opponents to ribbons. And there's nothing more they can do from that than that. But it's very difficult to know how much we can take from it in terms of looking ahead to the quarterfinal. Because even looking at the game today, and again, it was something I really noticed in that first half, France were getting front football on pretty much every carry. They were making one metre, two metre, three metre plus on every carry. Italy were just going backwards. Now, that isn't going to be the case against Ireland or against South Africa, presuming those are the teams that they're most likely to face. So how much can we take from this game? Maybe not too much. Maybe it just reaffirmed what we already knew about this French team, that they are very, very good indeed. And those two quarterfinals, whatever the matchup ends up being, are going to be blockbuster. I'm hoping to be in Paris for it. Hopefully my accreditation comes through. So big credit to the French. Brilliant atmosphere. Strength in depth if you look at the players coming into that team, as well as all the stardust that we already knew. Tougher challenges ahead, but equally whoever has to face them at home with this crowd and the wave of momentum behind this team is going to be an incredibly, incredibly tall order. So those were kind of my general thoughts on it. Let me know what you thought, in particularly on Italy, inaccurate, poor kicking, let France into the game early, lack of strategy, and from that point on, the game was done. So do let me know what you made of it. France, they march on into the quarterfinal. Do you agree that we can't probably take too much from this in terms of how they'll perform in that quarterfinal, it just reaffirms what we already knew. You can let me know in the com comment section. Make sure you like the video as well and also subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one.